Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. It is 1 p.m. UK British summertime, and we are going to get going here. Uh, just a quick audio test before I start. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you just type a Y into the chat box so I know uh, we are good to go. Testing audio, one, two, three. Testing audio, one, two, three. A why in the chat box, guys, if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen. Thanks very much. Okay, let's get started. But before we do, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, uh, most pertinent for today's presentation, the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I ultimately left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into uh, losing positions, and I experienced a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months, was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to step back and start uh, step back and stop focusing solely on what I could make from the markets, and start focusing more on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy. Oftentimes, in the face of negative feedback from the markets, in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're really playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also uh, provide daily technical trade setup videos, uh, which I share through the Tickmill Trading View account, and I'll post a link for those who are interested in following those uh, at the end of today's session. I also run Tickmill's eMini Strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan, pre-market trading plan for the cash 
S&P 500 trading session. I give my bias for the day and the specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 3,000 points of profit since we launched the group last April. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York, uh, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to managing the markets, and most importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's material. Today, we're going to look at uh, higher time frame charts. There have been some interesting developments in the markets. Obviously, we had that CPI print come in yesterday, softer than expected, which led to uh, a major rally in terms of risk assets. And so we're going to look at uh, the next key inflection points where I see the next uh, decent trading opportunities coming off these uh, higher time frame charts. So starting with the S&P 500, I'm using the E-mini futures contract. And what I'm tracking now is a five wave sequence that, uh, that I believe is developing. The close the, or the close at or just above that 42.10 level yesterday was pivotal to suggest that we are in an impulsive move to the upside for now. Uh, what I'm looking for now is as we hold 41.90 to 41.80 as support, I'm looking for price to extend up to test 42.70. From there, I'm watching for bearish momentum divergence, and you can uh, track that on intraday timeframes, but I'm, uh, for the purposes of today's presentation, I'm showing it on the higher time frame. But what I'm looking for is 42.70 to act as resistance. I will be looking to fade this current leg to the upside in and around those levels, and I'll be looking for a three-wave corrective move to ultimately pull back to give us a, uh, a pullback similar in scope and scale to that wave two corrective move. So that would take us back into test uh, the 4040 level on the downside. From there, I'll be looking to re-engage on the long side, looking for a minimum five equals one extension to the upside. Obviously, want to pay close attention to how we trade at the trend line. 42 comes in now, about 42.95. But if we get through there, I'll be looking for a move up to 4330s. And then from there, again, I'll be watching for momentum divergence to develop as we complete this sequence. And then obviously looking for a minimum three-wave corrective move. And certainly we'll be thinking about a move back down to test that potential wave for low 44C, 40.50. NASDAQ, similar idea developing here. We are looking, we've actually taken out the trend line resistance here on the NASDAQ, so uh, showing some relative strength. What I'll be looking for now is a test of the trend line resistance coming in at uh, 13,670, got weekly projected range resistance, 13,710. Again, from there, watching for bearish reversal patterns, and I'll be looking for a three-wave corrective move, similar in scope and scale to this uh, wave two correction. So that would put us back down into uh, 12,760 area, weekly projected range support. From there, I look to engage on the long side, again, looking for a fifth wave extension. At a minimum, targeting a five equals one, 13,900. We've also got this high volume mode just above 14,116. So that's going to be my target zone for the wave five extension. And then we'll be looking for another corrective move to the downside in terms of the NASDAQ. Dow Jones. So what I'm looking for here is a move up now to ideally test this trend line resistance and fade here. So 33,850 to 33,900 is the target zone. And from there, again, I want to see some momentum divergence in play. You can look on the four hour or the hourly time frame to, uh, to get confirmation of that. But what I'm ultimately looking for then is a wave four pullback, which should see us test into the 32,400 area. And then from there, we're looking for a five equals one. When I refer to five equals one, what I'm talking about 
is a minimum upside objective of equal to that in scope and scale of the wave one move. So um, that would give us this type of pattern here. So we look for the pullback, like I say, 32,140 area. And then we're looking for a minimum fifth wave extension, 34,224. And similar to the NASDAQ, we do have that high volume low that often acts as a magnet above at 34,650. And then from there, I'll be looking for a deeper corrective move to develop. Russell. has actually been the relative strength leader out of all the US equity indexes, uh, the Russell tracking the, the small caps there. So what I'm looking for here is a test of the high volume mode, and I'm looking for price to fail or, or fade into this 2000, uh, or 2010 level, watch for bearish reversal patterns. And then we're looking for that wave two corrective move to be replicated. Uh, oftentimes you'll get uh, where we have a wave two that is, uh, is more of a consolidation move, uh, took a bit of time to develop. You might see the wave four move happen uh, much faster. It could be more of a spike of a move. So it might be that we pull back into this 1890 and then we don't get the consolidation here. We just shoot up into our wave five objective, five equals one, we're looking for 2068. And then from there, we'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns again to play for a deeper corrective move. And certainly I'll be thinking about a retest of this uh, pitchfork support into those 1870s. We've got high volume mode there, 1880. The DAX. <clears throat> so looking for the DAX here to extend into its trend line resistance, weekly projected range resistance, 13,978. Then we also have this high volume node for just above 14,000. So again, we watch for this momentum divergence to be maintained here. So we look for price to make a new high. We don't want to see a new high in terms of the uh, psych indicator here. And then we look for that three wave corrective move equal in scope and scale uh, to that wave two low. And then we'll be looking for a fifth wave extension before once again, looking again on the short side. The Nikkei. So the Nikkei looking now for a test of trend channel resistance, 28,560, just take out the stops here above the range resistance would be an ideal move. And then as long as we maintain negative uh, momentum divergence, we look for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And I'm looking for a move back into test the pivot here and the ascending trend line support, 27,240s before looking for the next leg to the upside. We're targeting 29,370, which is the weekly equality objective versus the current swing structure. Moving to the FX space dollar index. Dollar, uh, after the CPI, obviously yesterday, and uh, the market's sensing that we might have uh, a peak inflation in play now, I'm looking for the dollar index to test 102.60s, which is the equality objective versus this swing structure. From there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side and certainly thinking about a retest of the high volume area here, 10630s. And then we may do a broader double correction. But for now, any move back in to test the underside of this channel and that high volume node, 10, uh, sorry, 10630s, that's going to be a, an opportunity to engage on the short side. And we're looking for a 10260 test. Euro dollar. So again, potential here for a double corrective move. I'm anticipating that when we get up and test this equality objective, 104.10 to 104.20, I know I, I see us pulling back there from that area, as long as we maintain momentum divergence here, look for a pullback to a minimum of the pivot back down to the 10090, which is our B wave low at this stage. Now, if we take that out and we, and we get a close through there, then I'm looking for a retest of cycle lows. And ultimately, I want to see a test of the uh, yearly S3, 9760s. But what I would say is that by the, if, if this trade sets up and plays out, certainly by the time we get it back into that pivot area, you want either to be risk-free or take half your position off, et cetera, uh, because I do see the potential for a double correction to test the high volume node here, 10530s. Um, as a potential scenario. So again, if you think about what I was just talking about with the dollar index, a bit more of a complex corrective pattern developing, um, that's likely to play out in a similar fashion in the euro, obviously the inverse, the euro being the highest percentage uh, contributor to the dollar index. So 
It could get a little bit more uh, complicated in terms of the trade scenario as we uh, as we head into the back end of August here with respect to some of these FX majors. Sterling, I look for any break now in Sterling through the uh, 123 area. I would be engaged on the long side and I've got a target now and a quality objective, 125.50s. At this stage, we need to see a loss of the pivot here at 120 to start to think uh, about shorts again. But ultimately, I am still looking for that 115 test uh, 116, 115 test in terms of sterling on the downside. So these are just, I'm just identifying where the, the corrective moves are likely to, uh, to play out now in terms of these FX majors. Uh, st uh, sorry, dollar yen, talked about this last week, fading the 135.50s. Uh, we've got that rejection yesterday. So I've been looking now, break through the prior lows, 130.30s. And we've got a, an equality objective now down to 126. 80s, which becomes our downside target in terms of dollar yen. Euro yen. I'm looking in terms of the euro yen, any test into uh, 136, uh, sorry, 139.60s, I want to look for opportunities to short the euro yen. And I'm looking for a test down into monthly projected range support 131.30s as the downside objective at this stage. Really, we need to see a close through 142.30s to suggest the downside is done, that this correction is sufficient, and we're heading to, uh, to make new highs in terms of the euro yen. Sterling yen, I am looking ideally for a test of the trend channel support, monthly projected range support 157.80s. Uh, that will be an area I'll be paying close attention to as, uh, as we set up then the potential next leg to the upside in terms of sterling yen. And what I'd be looking for there, if we've, uh, again, using that minimum five equals one objective, if we go all the way back down here and we use this as our wave one move. And we overlay here. So we're looking for a 170 test there in terms of, um, in terms of sterling yen. Bear with me, guys, I just have to adjust the position on a minute. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so that's Sterling Yen. Let's take a look at the Aussie Yen. The Aussie Yen's got an interesting pattern here developing. We have got a potential triangle. So there are a couple of areas I'm paying close attention to in terms of the Aussie Yen. Any test into the trend line resistance here, if we get a bearish reversal pattern, I've been looking to engage on the short side. Certainly we think about a test of triangle support, 9140s, but we do have an equality objective unchecked here at the 9030 area. At this stage, only a close back through the potential B wave high or the X wave, uh, W wave here, uh, 9580s would uh, pull me in on the long side. And again, I'm looking for a move up into uh, 103.90s is the target I have here. And that's an equality objective versus this weekly swing structure in terms of the Aussie yen. The ideal scenario for me would be a move down into test the weekly trend line support 8770s. And uh, again, watching the bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. CAD yen. <coughs> Similar type of, well, it's slightly different here. We've got the potential for an ending diagonal pattern here. So when you move into the trend line support, if we get bullish reversal patterns there, I'd be looking to engage on the long side. I'm looking for a test then and a failure at 108.20s. That also is the yearly R3. The ideal scenario would be a break through the trend line support here and a test of 99 which is the equality objective versus the current swing structure. And once again, I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns then to engage on the long side. And we would be looking for that, uh, that test of the yearly R3 as our upside objective. Aussie, nice setup developing here in the Aussie. I am looking for a move now into the high volume mode, 7180s to 7220s. I watch for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side, Looking for a move back down, we've got a potential pitchfork play developing here, back down into this 60, 
eight sixties. From there, I look for bullish reversal patterns, and I'm targeting a test of the uh, weekly trend line resistance seventy four fifties as the upside objective for that move. So some decent two way trading opportunities developing in these uh, commodity FX. We've also got a similar scenario in the Kiwi here. Looking for us now to test 65, the 65 level, watch for price to fail there, back into the high volume nodes. And again, looking for this double corrective move uh, to potentially play out and take us up into the 66, 70s. Uh, we also have, let's bring in this weekly trend line resistance, 67, 50s, and that, uh, that high volume node there. So some decent uh, upside targets to play for there. Gold, still holding long gold positions, and uh, this trade is starting to uh, to develop quite nicely now. So what I'm looking for now in gold is um, we could make another new high here into the high volume mode, uh, 1830s, and then I'm looking for a three-wave corrective move to engage again on the long side. We've got a gap here, 1750s would be a nice, uh, nice target zone. And then I'm looking for another leg of upside uh, at least an ABC move into that 1900 level. So again, I'm always thinking in terms of equality and symmetry in markets. So uh, you can see that we that would be equal in scope and scale to that first leg. That would complete then potentially an ABC. But as we know, every impulse move in the markets, every new trend starts potentially as a correction, an ABC move. So once we get here, if the pullbacks remain supported, it could be that we are going to uh, to retest highs in terms of gold. We came just shy of the equality objective, about $10. But uh, the response we're seeing so far is certainly impulsive. And so I'm looking to add to long positions in gold. Uh, similar scenario in silver, not quite as impulsive as gold, but we did actually tag the 1840 equality objective. And so I'm looking now, let me draw this in. You can, so I can see clearly here on the daily time frame a one, two, three, four, five. So that suggests that the next move will be corrective and we will be looking to, uh, I haven't got any positions on at the moment in silver, but I'm going to be looking to, uh, to get something going here. So ideally we test up into weekly projected range resistance here, 2120s. And then I'm looking for any move back into this wave four low here, 1940, to engage on the long side. And certainly I'd be thinking about this high volume nodes up to the 2310 area as my target uh, next upside objective. Crude oil came just shy. Well, I mean, I say just like 86, 30s, we were looking for the test. We've got an 87 low. Uh, so far, um, this doesn't look as impulsive as the moves we're seeing in the metals. Um, but what I'll be watching for is the first rotation lower on the four hour time frame. We should find support in and around the 90 handle. And that'll be an opportunity to engage on the long side. Target initially is going to be a move up to the high volume mode 102 in terms of crude oil. Or if we get rejected here from the underside of this prior. Uh, bear flag scenario. Uh, let's just remove this and I'll show you what I'm thinking. So if this is corrected, let's say this is a three wave move that terminates into the 9380 and then we get a last push into our target zone. And then again, I'll be looking on the long side and we look for a 102 test in terms of crude oil. Let's round them out here with the cryptos. Bitcoin, I'm looking for a test of the trend channel resistance, 27,330s. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns. And as those of you who uh, are here on a weekly basis know, I am looking for a 12,000 test in terms of Bitcoin. And then from there, I could get uh, meaningfully interest in the cryptos. Or alternatively, if we can get a break of the downtrend channel, then uh, that would suggest that we've got an impulse move developing and we'll be looking to play pullbacks. But for now, I, I'm watching very clear, carefully how we trade into this trend channel resistance. Ether, similar scenario. With Ether, I'm looking for a test of 22.20. From there, watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And we have an 8.51 equality objective in terms of Ether. And I'm going to round things out this week looking at Apple because we are getting to a pretty interesting point here in terms of Apple. Apple today became the biggest company to have the largest percentage contribution to the S&P 500. So if, this, if the current action we're seeing in these markets is potentially a bear market rally, then we'll be looking for Apple to fade into 174 
and we'll be playing for a minimum three-way corrective move back down to the midpoint of the channel at 150. So that's uh, those are the charts that I'm watching. The uh, the areas of interest, uh, you know, it's uh, for me at the moment. Move we're seeing in risk sentiment remains a uh, potential bear market rally, but we are going to be testing some pretty interesting areas in uh, in the coming weeks, and we'll see how uh, how the markets respond. What I'm going to do now is open up for any questions. If you've got a question, or you've got a pair you'd like me to take a look at, or an instrument you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered in my presentation, you can type that into the chat box. I'm going to post the link for the Facebook group. You just request access. You get my daily trade plan. Uh, from there, I will also post for you the Sigmil um, Trading View account, where you can track my trade ideas and trading opportunities on a daily basis through the videos that I post there. That's in there as well. Uh, questions. So, does anyone have a question? Roy, I can see you've raised your hand, but I can't see a question. Do you have a question you want to type into the chat box? If so, now's the time to do it. Okay, can't see any questions coming through at this point. So, I'm going to uh, presume that I've done a reasonable job of explaining what it is I am looking at and where I see the opportunities developing in the uh, coming sessions. Um, as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much. Uh, apologies, um, there won't actually be a live session next week. Um, I'm on, uh, on vacation next week, so it'll be in two weeks' time. Thanks very much, everyone, and I hope this helps.